If you have been in the market for a coffee grinder, you might have come across two types of coffee grinders, a burr grinder and a blade grinder. These two types of grinders are referring to the mechanism that the grinder uses to grind the beans. To the left we have a flat burr and a conical burr, and to the right we have some blades for a blade grinder. In this video, I'll show the differences between the two grinder types in terms of how they work and how they influence grind consistency. I'll also explain why a burr grinder is always superior to a blade grinder when it comes to brewing coffee. First, we must talk about the importance of grind consistency. The art of coffee is all about extracting the best flavors of the coffee bean using water. A significant factor that determines extraction level is grind size. The finer the grinds, the more gets extracted during the brewing process, and vice versa. But if your grind size is inconsistent and you have both coarse and fine grinds together, your cup of coffee can end up with both under-extracted and over-extracted notes, neither of which are desirable flavors in a good cup of coffee. The goal is therefore to achieve a consistent grind size where each particle reaches the sweet spot of perfect extraction at approximately the same time, leading to a balanced cup of coffee. Initially, I wanted to show a blade versus burr example with actual coffee beans, but as you can see, my blade grinder stopped working. So, instead, I'm going to show you an analogy with a potato. So this is how a potato would be chopped by a blade grinder. To get finer potato slices, you chop more. However, it does not guarantee that the bigger pieces of potato get chopped, leading to inconsistent potato slices. The only potato size that leads to some kind of consistency is extremely fine, which you achieve by chopping for a long time. There's no method to the madness. You keep on chopping until you visually see the consistency that you want. Change settings? Nah. The only setting you can change is the blade type and how long you're chopping it for. This is how a burr grinder would grind a potato. Two shapes are positioned close to each other where the distance between them determine the potato size. Unlike cutting a potato with a knife where the potato repeatedly gets chopped, once the burr grinder has cut the potato to its size, it leaves the burrs and they fall into a separate chamber. The end result is that a blade grinder will have a lot of inconsistent potato slices, while a burr grinder will produce uniform and even potato slices. Frying up these potatoes, the ones sliced with the blade grinder will have both big chunks that are undercooked and small chunks that are super crispy and overcooked. The ones cut with a burr grinder will be all evenly cooked at the same time. There are a couple of products and hacks you can do to fix inconsistent grinds. This includes things like a sieve, a paper towel, or a crew sifter to remove the fines. As a crew sifter owner, I used to use it religiously for around a year or so. If you don't know what it does, it filters your coffee grinds into three different layers. A extremely fine layer, a extremely coarse layer, and a layer that is just right. So to sift or not to sift? That is the question we need to ask ourselves here. For me, even though the cups were tasting better, the time and effort and wastage was just a bit too much for me. It would add a couple of minutes to my routine, and I would waste around 10 to 20% of the grinds. With a blade grinder, I bet the waste would be up in the 30 to 40% range to get a consistent grind size. The proof is in the chia seed pudding. In my many years as a barista, I have not encountered one blade grinder behind the bar. Listing out all the grinders that I've encountered during my barista days, all of these grinders have a lot of different features, but the one constant between them is that they're all burr grinders. Blade grinders just don't produce the sort of consistent result that is expected of a serious business serving quality coffee. 
To take it one step further, I wouldn't even recommend a blade grinder as an intermediate option before a quality burr grinder. Instead, I would take a cheap burr grinder or pre-ground beans any day of the week. Now that we know the importance of a burr grinder over a blade grinder, let's dive a bit deeper into the aspects you should be on the lookout for when buying a burr grinder. Before moving on, I encourage you to check out my Patreon. Recently, I've been talking about whitening teeth and TikTok. If you enjoy the coffee content that I create, I would love your support over at Patreon. And now, back to the features you should be looking for in a burr grinder. Burrs can be made out of ceramic and stainless steel. The big difference is that ceramic burrs have a longer durability but struggle with finer grind settings. Ceramic is also more prone to chipping, which might be an issue if there are some stray mini pebbles that make their way into your beans. Stainless steel starts off sharper but gets dull faster, meaning you need to replace them more often. This extra sharpness makes it ideal for espresso. You will come across two different burr types, flat burrs and conical. Flat burrs produce a more uniform and consistent grind size, making them more expensive. Conical has its upsides though with being cheaper, creates less friction, and also being a bit less noisy. Speaking of noise, if you are concerned about loud noises in the morning, then getting a conical hand grinder will be the ideal choice for you. You don't think about it, but most electrical burr grinders are extremely loud. There are also some common issues you should be aware of with conical grinders. Many of them become inconsistent at a coarser grind setting. The problem is caused by a lack of support to the crankshaft, making it so that the conical burr wobbles back and forth. One of my first grinders was a Hario Skirton ceramic burr hand grinder. It is a great hand grinder for its price range, but sadly enough has this wobbly crankshaft issue. It is still a great budget hand grinder though, because you can minimize the downsides by grinding finer than usual and compensating that increase in extraction with something like cooler water or a shorter brew time. Bigger is not always better. With larger burrs, the main benefit you get is an increase in grind speed. The additional speed comes at the cost of a larger grind body and a bigger motor, which usually means also a higher price tag. It's not a vital feature, but it is nice to know that the grinder can grind your regular morning dose of coffee in one go. It's pretty annoying to measure out and pour beans twice, which might be an issue with some of the smaller hand grinders. Stepped is where you have increments between grind sizes, while stepless is a smooth transition between grind settings. Think of it as a gradient versus specific swatches. Stepless is like a gradient because you can select any color between white and black. Stepped is like swatches because you can only select these 10 specific tones between white and black. If you plan on doing espresso, I would highly recommend spending a bit extra on a stepless grinder. If you are only brewing filtered coffee, then the granularity you get from a stepped grinder should suffice. When I got into espresso, the grinder I got to accompany the Ronchilio Silvia was a Ronchilio Rocky. They were usually sold as a pair, so obviously the grinder should be suited for espresso, right? That assumption was sadly enough flawed as the Ronchilio Rocky was a stepped grinder. So when I was brewing espresso, I could pull a shot at grind size 5 and see that it was running slow. I would then try to tweak the setting and go a bit coarser, which was at 6, pull another shot, and the espresso would be gushing out of the portafilter. I wanted to grind somewhere between 5 and 6, but sadly enough that setting was impossible with the Ranchilio Rocky. If this video helped you decide what new grinder to get, or if you already have one, let us know what you got and if it's working for you. Leave a comment below with what grinder you first started with, or a grinder that you wish to buy in the future. My first hand grinder was a Hario Skirton, followed by the Ronchilio Rocky. 
The Ranchilio Rocky has been with me for eight years and is seriously as sturdy as a rock. <laughs> if I wanted to upgrade, it would probably be to a high-end hand grinder like the Commandante C40 or the Kinu M47. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to join my mission of mastering everyday coffee. For your next video, why not learn about roast levels and how dark and light roasts differ? Right over here. I'll see you there. That was in one go. Pretty good.